What would you see if you could gaze into a crystal ball? I was inspired by M.C. Escher's Hand with Reflecting Ball, which is a distorted self-portrait to create my own version of it. It's not a self-portrait, but I drew a portrait within a sphere by using a distorted grid. I laid my blank piece of paper over the the sphere grid so that I could see it easily. Uh, you can use a light box or you can just use a piece of paper that has some transparency. In my case, I used a piece of uh, Xerox paper and I was able to see through it quite easily. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the picture of the woman's face and I'm creating an X plus diamond hashtag grid on it, which is something that I went over in another video. I'll post the link down in the comments. In any case, I'm going square by square. Um, I'm measuring out four squares across and four squares down. There's more than that in the sphere. So I'm just using the front 16 squares in order to draw the woman's face. Actually, the rectangles, not squares. But regardless, I'm going box by box and whatever I see in that box, I'm fitting into the distorted grid on the sphere. So naturally, the top of the head is going to look larger because it's bubbling out. And the bottom of the face is going to be distorted to look smaller, which will allow the woman to look like she is either being reflected in the ball or I was even thinking it's a crystal ball. And I'm gazing into it and seeing her face, seeing her image. I'm not sure yet what the story is behind the picture. But as you can see, I'm going box by box, and I'm also adding in details. When I add in details, I'm thinking in terms of the volume. The hair would curve around this, the skull. The bun she's wearing on top of her head, the hair would curve in on itself. So... I'm not just coloring in, I'm coloring in the correct direction. As I've done in earlier videos, it'll enhance the three-dimensional qualities of the drawing. A word about erasing. Erasing doesn't mean you messed up. I, I consider erasing to be part of the drawing process, an integral part of the drawing process. And you'll see that I do a lot of erasing as I draw. And that's absolutely fine. It doesn't mean you made a mistake or messed up. It's just part of the process of visualizing something, taking a step back, looking at it, realizing it doesn't look quite right, and changing it. It's all part of this self-evaluation process. Unfortunately, a lot of elementary te school art teachers have this damaging notion that erasing is somehow bad. And they don't give their students erasers or allow them to erase and I think this leads to a lot of frustration for a lot of children. And it also uh, leads to the misunderstanding in a lot of older students that erasing is somehow bad. So I wish elementary school teachers wouldn't do that. And I personally embrace erasing. I've used an eraser my whole life. I've been drawing ever since I was a little girl. And I believe most people who taught themselves how to draw as young children used an ordinary number two pencil with an eraser on the other end, which is why I'm using one in this tutorial now. Now, uh, for the hand, what I did was I took a little metal bowl and I tried to hold it as if I was holding a reflecting sphere in my hand. Sort of held my hand up and then looked at the different shapes and tried to draw them around the ball. So this is how a lot of illustrators work. They'll take one thing from real life, one thing from a photograph, something that they invented in their head, and they'll combine all those things together to create a picture that tells a story. So I'm taking distinct elements and putting them together for one composition to express the idea that's in my head. And that's what most professional illustrators do when they create an illustration. I'm just adding some finishing touches to her. Um, I then went in with a fine marker to add a few details. 
I use different weights of marker from thin to thick to emphasize the various details. And at this point, I'm not really using the grid at all. The grid was mainly in the very beginning to get the contours and shape correct. Now the finishing touches are more from my imagination. This is Rachel Wittenberg, the helpful art teacher, showing you how to create a portrait within a sphere using a grid. You could use this technique to draw just about anything inside a sphere to answer the question, what would you see if you could gaze into a magical crystal ball?